but we can even um, talk about about this uh, um, this the, the this trade off about the uh, the S three S four classes. Do, do you have any experiences to share maybe with us in, in the meantime? Yeah, for, for my own part, I've only I've only um, unknowingly used as as uh, I guess kind of these these classes. I've I've not I've not built anything with them. Uh, I don't know if others have built anything with them, or or alternatively use use them like R six for shiny, for example. Okay, so apparently no one <laughs> has uh, much of experience uh, using this. Uh, so basically applying this uh, um, object oriented programming because basically uh, what uh, what uh, um, what it is is uh, uh, that you are making um, a program uh, so you are actually developing um, um something that uh, it's organized within an environment and uh, composed of things and so it's not, it's not uh, it's part of r as a functional language but it's not the, the, the part of r which is a, uh, so r can be a functional language and then there is object or orienting programming which is uh, um um basically um embedding uh, all the objects uh, produced by the uh, function and programming no i don't know if i i made it like uh, clear so um if if you like to make a package if you like to um do something a bit more articulated you, it might happen that you are going to use or uh, assemble uh, an S3 or an S4 object. Uh, yeah, Let, let's call them objects in, in, in the meaning that they, they, they are, um, they have some um, uh, attributes, okay? And uh, so, this this chapter is basically based on uh, um, on a recap of the section that we have already seen, um, highlighting the the differences within uh, these classes, and saying what is best, uh, what is weak within the, within the, uh, within them, and what is usually happen when you start using this. Uh, um uh, the, these classes and when um you know uh w what is best uh in, in in under some 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 conditions basically i i kind of have a question for the group actually um has has anyone does anyone um has anyone used any packages that are S4 under the hood? I, I I feel like, you know, when I was looking around for the S3, you know, during the S3 chapter, I, I found some things, but not for the S4 chapter. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm not sure that I looked. I, um, I mean, like, you know, reading this chapter, you know, you know Hadley points out that, um, Bioconductor is one place where you'll find S4 quite frequently, but I didn't know if there were any, if others had used any packages um, where S4 is used under the hood that weren't weren't from Bioconductor. There might be, you know, in other words, put another way, that might be more um, readily encountered by kind of an average R user who's not working in that particular domain. I don't think I have. Um, I just did a quick, um, quick search in in one of the packages I use, and 
it did show up, but it's from the Google Sheets 4 package. And so... Oh, nice one. Yeah. That, that's why S4 showed up in my search. Um, but that does oh, not... oh, oh, meaning like a sub the substring in Google Sheets for yeah, okay. got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it uses S four. Um, it, it gave me hope for a brief second. So I've, I've stumbled upon one, but I also don't use. Uh, I'm not do. I don't do the geo stuff very much yet. That's an area I hope to grow. Maybe Federica, who's done the. The 30 day map challenge will be familiar with. So SP apparently uses uh, S4. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but uh, you know, you, you, it might happen that you use a package and you don't even know about that. Trevin, uh, last week were you saying that Roxygen 2 uses S4? Uh, am I remembering correctly? Um, I think that might have been R6. I uh, got it, got it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like that's. I feel like S4 is like a curiosity and. <laughs> Unless you're in the bio space, you, you probably won't be using it too much. I mean, to kind of my naive eyes, it, it, it seems like S4 involves a lot of complexity. And I, I was just kind of wondering where would be the use cases where the payoff would be worth the complexity? Um, I mean, it seems like S4 might, or sorry, par, pardon me. Thinking about it very quickly and this without the benefit of any experience, uh, I, uh, practical experience um, with these classes as, as kind of a developer, um, you know, it seems like S3 might do the job. Um, I mean, I don't know if there are like, problems with dispatch that you find in S3 that S4 solves somehow, but the, just setting things up with S4 seems a bit more onerous. That's just my quick impression. Um, I think the chapter was saying that since it is really more complicated and requires more guide rails and setup, that it was maybe more beneficial if you're working in like a larger group or group of programmers. Um, but otherwise, I'm not I'm not really sure what where the other benefit is. Yeah, I just uh, um, how do you call it? Uh, dropped in dropped in chat. Uh, uh, I was kind of googling as as we were talking, and I, I found the Stack Overflow uh, uh, thread where where Hadley uh, seems to be asking a, a similar question to ours, um, and it seems like a lot of people are pointing him to uh, to to uh, what do you call it? Uh, the bioconductor. Um, But still, still kind of, I mean, I, I don't know enough about, I, well, I know, all I know about Bioconductor is number one, that it exists, and number two, that it seems to contain kind of, bio, you know, bioinformatics type type content. But I, I'm just wondering, like, what about that problem space makes, makes people in that area want to use S4? What the chapter says about um, um, about this um, choice uh, to use S four S four versus uh, S three, for example, is that the S four is like uh, more suitable for. Um, articulated uh, programming environments, such as, as, uh, as you said, um, bioinductor um, packages. 
are. And um, this happened that um, if, if, uh, um, if you use this, um, uh, this such of um, environments, uh, um with these classes so uh, in in inside the s4 you might be able to uh relate uh more complicated uh, uh more complicated uh, um interactions basically yeah, I guess I guess my struggle is, is is sort of in between like S3 versus S4. I, I, I think I think I kind of get the interest of R6. Um, I mean, it seems like it solves well, potentially solves a prob a set of problems that others don't. Um, well, maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, what what he said is that R six is like uh, apparently, um, you know, you tend to use R six um, if if you have used S three, it it's easily that you um, start like switching to R six. Because apparently it seems like uh, easier to use for the uh, pipes operators, for example, for example, at, at the um, I mean, for for me, kind of like the most compelling uh, use case for R six, I guess, is when you want something that's. Um, That I guess a little bit violates the norms of 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 our programming, where you can have a return value and a side effect. So I mean, typically, I guess R and you 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 kind of want you know pure functions that um, either are invoked um, for the return value or or for their side effect, but not both. But R six, I guess, potentially, as I understand it, could be could be used maybe more easily for sort of um, um, doing both things at the same time, where, you know, kind of like a method, a method yields a return value, but also a method changes the object itself, right? So it, it the object kind of has a, a state and like the interaction with the object changes the state of the object. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's uh, uh, jump into the presentation so we see what we are talking about. Can you hear me? Okay. You you also have uh, uh, the notes already in the in the repo. So, like, if you go to uh, the GitHub. People and um, go to notes. Notes are here. There we go. So it's a very uh, very long chapter. And uh, can you see my screen? Yep, very clearly. Okay. So um, uh, it's a very long chapter, and I think somehow has made some uh, uh, some, some lights has put some lights in um, around these things. So basically, the learning objective uh, is to understand the trade-offs between S S three, R six, and S four. Um, what? John Chambers said is everything that exists in R is an object. Okay, so let, let's let's do a little recap just to uh, make up our mind about then finally conclude with this with this section. 
So R is a functional language, as just, just as the same as we said, functions uh, made in R are objects with special attributes. And those objects with special attributes are called classes. Okay. Um, the object-oriented system or OP is the environment where these objects and the and classes are defined and operate with a scope because the scope is very important so um if you don't have a scope you are using r for i don't know like uh making calculations looking at your data or but you are not doing anything or for a scope you the, 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 the meaning of the scope in this, sen in, um, in this sense is to do something with your code, okay? And here is where object-oriented system comes up, okay? Uh, the inheritance concept of OOP allows one class to derive the features and the functionalities of another class. The inheritance is something that you uh, have embedded inside OOP objects. And this feature facilitates code reusability, for example. So to, to recap, I, I, I haven't mentioned everything because uh, other things go are, are a bit forward within using this uh, uh, classes. But uh, in general, object-oriented programming are made of classes, uh, or object, they have inheritance, they can be encapsulated. So they basically, there is uh, the encapsulation of object uh, within object-oriented programming. There is a sort of abstraction and polymorphism, so more things, not just one, so you have Okay, uh, this is something nice that I found um, on the internet. You, you, if you look at the credits figure here, you can, uh, it leads you to, should at least lead you to this uh, page. So what is an object? Okay, an object is a data structure that contains methods based on attributes. Okay, I'm, I'm doing, uh, so you are just uh, so you you have uh, already thought about how to use these things uh, for, for for this type of process. Okay, so let let's just see this blue package, which is quite interesting. And for example, make this comparison with this function um, object type. If I do, if if I look at the object type of uh, one to ten this is it, it is a base object so it's not it, it's a functional programming it, it's the part of r which is the functional programming just the base you yeah you may say okay if i use ggplot is that the same base is a package no it, it provides some functions uh, and this this concept is that um the base is the base of a R as a functional language. And then you might have other packages, which they, they can be S3 objects, they can be um, S4, uh, and so on. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> hopefully, do, hopefully do, if, if you want to just jump in and, and say, um, if we look at empty cars, for example, Okay, uh, we, we know what empty cars is. It's a data frame, okay, with information about cars. If I do object type, it says it, it is an S3 object, okay? Because it's not just uh, the base of the functional programming R, but it's part of the object-oriented programming system. And in particular, it's an S3 class. So an object, it, it, it is 
it's also called an instance. Okay, you said what you already said what 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 is an instance and how to deal with instance and so an object is also called uh, an instance of a class and uh, the process of object creation is called instantiation so for example if i do class 1 to 10 the the class function really is what class is 1 to 10 it says is this an integer if i do class of empty cars it says is it is a data frame so you might say why class doesn't say s3 seeing that s3 is a class this the um, we know about that but just to be a little bit more specific that class here is for uh, identifying the attributes of the object while the type identify the, the, the object oriented system. Um, uh, so the object type is identify the class. Okay, because the, those little things can, can, can make confusion. Okay, so to go <laughs> before, what, what is a class? Okay, a class is where object are defined and obtained by encapsulating data and functions. Okay. Um, so is is that clear somehow? Yeah, very clear actually. Okay. So there are different type types of classes in uh, OOP, and they they are S3, R6, S, S4, and we expect R7, okay? Uh, as S3 is like the third version of the S programming. R6 is just because uh, it just been released after R being released. So just after S became R, and so we have R6, which is related to S3. And then we have S4, which is an improvement of S3. Somehow it's like a bit more complicated. And we now, we, we, we are going to, to actually talk about what are the trade-offs. So that means the, the, the little tricks that make the difference, with the, differences, the difference between these uh, classes. Uh, to give another example, this is a class, so just imagine a box, okay? Or a structure, okay? Not, not only a box, it's like an, an environment, okay? And in this environment, uh, it, it's made like that. I have a student and its name and its uh, identity number, okay? Enrollment number. This environment is composed of two objects, so the student the, and so can, can have more objects. So a class contains objects. Okay, you say, okay, this class is the same as, as this object. So uh, the class is just a structure that you inside put, put everyone. You can imagine like a, a, a draw, uh with with some um uh, like uh, how do you say like the separation of the things already made and then you put things inside and you might be able to cover all the spaces but you know the things that you put inside are not the, the draw draw <laughs> okay so let's let's go forward, and you have another link here, which is uh, quite interesting, and I, where I found like some 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 interesting information here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so try, let's try understanding the trade-offs. Okay, so a moment. So here we look to um, compare contrast the OOP objects. 
what are the, the difference, differences between S4 and S3? So which class to use, S4 or S3? Um, S3 is a flexible, flexible class. It uh, foreseen a list, so inside its environment, okay? It allows for lists. Uh, it's a list with attributes and assigned names. And it consists of three main components, a generic function, a method, and attributes. Each part of this are part of the R functional language. That they act together and compose the S3 class. Then the there is S4. S4 is a bit more structured. For it provide a more structured approach. It's more formal, more strict, more verbose. It contains functions for defined methods and generics, as well as S3, but he, he, um, it allows for its functions. So as a set of functions that they are uh characteristics of s4 to give a like uh an idea of what i'm talking about if, if you want to set a class okay now now this is not uh, quite correct but you know you you assign an object to this function class and then you can uh assign values so the no value, sorry. You can assign a class to this uh, object. Okay, you can say class of X, and and assign it to be a factor, to be an integer, to be um, double. Okay, and you use this uh, this uh, syntax. Instead, in S four, you have a, a function set class. And you don't need the assignment uh, uh, structure syntax here. So you set a class of X. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I haven't got much practice on those things. So my might require some, some time for me to be, uh, feel like I'm able to, to use these classes. But just to, to, to summarize what are the differences, in theory at least, uh, S4 is a combination of increased complexity as well as S3. But, um, but it allows for inheritance of both classes and methods. So S4 is usually good for larger projects, such as Bioconductor, for example, and complex systems of interrelated objects. So basically it minimizes code duplication. And, the, and I, an example of this, uh, as, as you mentioned it, the, the book mentioned uh, this matrix package and make, uh, make, makes it easy to provide a general method that works for all inputs. So okay, this is this is theory, but what that that means um, basically uh, in in S three you cannot do some things. Instead, in S four you can do those things, <laughs> such as uh, if you assign a name to a function in S three, then you cannot give the same name to another function. Or um, let, let, let's, uh, let's go forward and um, uh, then go back here. Um, let's have a look at S3, uh, uh, so R6 versus S3. Because still these two are somehow related, more related to each other than S4. Okay, so when starting with uh, um, 
OOP, the S3 class is suggested as a default for its simplicity. So if you want to, to have, a, if you have a scope, okay, and you uh, develop a program or uh, you, you it are suggested to use S3 classes, okay? This is your point to start. Then when uh, things get more complicated because you are doing things more articulated and everything, uh, things can change. So, and the tendency is to switch towards uh, R6, okay, be be before the S4, because S4 is it's even more articulated, okay? So, uh, let, let's do this, uh, then, then we go back to, to that. Uh, let, let's see this and say, for, for example, in S3, I do plot some data, okay? In R6, I can use the dollar sign to obtain the same result. But what's happened here is that uh, the, um, uh, the object in R6 is encapsulated. So that's why, uh, somehow in other uh, text like uh, you know advanced uh, engineering productions uh, for shiny apps and everything mentioned r6 as a, a container okay because it's somehow uh, made of s3 objects but it puts them together it connects them the, this object together and you can you can use them with with uh, i'm not sure if i'm saying to, things totally right but, you know and this is the uh, the pipe the, the 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 dollar sign is the connection uh, thing so basically um, can you hear me Okay, basically R6 is built on encapsulated objects rather than generic functions, for example. Okay, generic functions are in R general programming, even in S3, but S3 for the generic function, method, and attribute in our object, okay, to be defined as, as an X3, S3 class. So sorry if I'm I'm keep repeating, but I'm I'm doing mostly for myself because it's a it's a like a foreign language. Uh, so what is the big difference? The, the general trade-offs with, with the, within this object. So this I've just made a picture from the book because it's quite articulated and um, Basically, it says uh, a generic is a, a regular function. So it lives in the global namespace. Okay, I've got, I've got a global namespace. Another six method belongs to an object. So it lives in a local namespace. Okay, this, this, is, this is tricky because if you think about our six is a, is somehow uh, some senses connections of objects okay so why this is local is not global instead of, so you know uh, you, you you might give some thoughts about those things this uh, influences how we think about naming Federica, do you, do you mind if i come in with a question yeah um so I, I think I kind of get this 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 uh, this name spacing um, this issue. I, I I think I see this, but um, you know, I mean, from a, from a practical standpoint, if we're going to use a let's say we're going to use a function, a function belongs it belongs to um, like the namespace of a a package, for example. So if we want to use a particular function, then we have to address where the function comes from right it comes from package x let's say whereas with an 
with an R6 object, you know, the namespaces of the methods belong to the object itself, right? Um, and, you know, you have certain methods that are available, methods and um, attributes that are available for the object, and, and you address it basically in a different way with the, with the dollar sign, this kind of infix operator. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, that, so that the chapter doesn't deal with this, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, let's say you create a package with, um, you know, somehow uses R6, then um, what do you, what do you export from your package? Do you export the object itself or do you export kind of methods? So like if I were doing uh, just, let's see the typical R package, I'd, I'd export functions, you know, from the package so that they're available to, to, to end users, right? But with R6, I'm kind of not sure what, what you would do. I mean, maybe that's answered in the, the R packages book, but I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about like, about that since like the, the name spacing of this works very, very differently. It's like the, the, the functions belong to the object, not to, not to a package, right? So the, like the, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, maybe that's more of a comment than a question, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because R6 is a package itself at, at this moment. R6 is a package. So if, if you want to use um, object uh, under an, an R6 environment, <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not saying if, I, if I'm talking right, uh, you need to, to install and load the package. In itself. Then you can make packages with R6, of course, and then you can do many things. And then uh, I'm not sure about that. So, but let, let's go forward. So, R6 reference semantics allow method to simultaneously return a value and modify an object something that S3 can't do. So basically in R6, you can have a value and modify the object. This solves painful problem called trading state. And this is what happened in S3. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not so basically you invoke then uh, one more interesting point is that you invoke an R6 method using the dollar sign, which is an infix operator. If you set up your methods correctly, you can use chain methods calls as an alternative to the pipe. And this is why you might tend to use R6 because it's somehow visually an ending, so more, um, easy to use, more straightforward, like this way it's easier for the user than this one. But you at the same time need to think about that because when you switch to R6, you can't do some things that you can do with S3, but at the same time you can do other things that you cannot do with uh, R6. But uh, R6, you, you need to see it as a, a connection within, within S3 object for you to do a good uh, programming. Uh, so this, this, this is like a sort of, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that, but this is my understanding. So let, let's go forward. So, to be more specific about namespacing, what are the what what where methods are in the space? Okay, in S three we have generic functions. Okay, that are global, as we said, not local. Okay, so there is a global namespace. So you have same verbs, 
and a uniform AP, AP, okay, in S3. So you, you have some verbs, and those are the verbs that you can use. So you can share the verbs within, within, within your, your programming uh, uh, workflow, and you have uniform AP. The negatives are related to homonymous so you, you method. So you cannot do assign same names. But somehow th this is negative and, and, and not, but it, it's something that we have seen with functions. Uh, the same as the, the, I, I made that, uh, I did that, that chapter uh, when you um, assign uh, a value to a function and then you call the function and assign another value then if you don't uh, specify that inside the function that you have just made uh, you might the function doesn't work properly so it, it doesn't release what you expect it i'm not sure if i made it clear so if i said but uh, um, instead, in R6, uh, which, as I already mentioned, uh, there's encapsulated methods, those methods are local, not global. And the objects are with a scope. Instead, so you can imagine like a matrioska with things that uh, you have a piece, then goes inside another piece and then goes inside another piece. So you have R functional language, then you have object or orienting programming with object from the R functional language. And then those objects are divided in other things that are like S3 and uh, then uh, uh, compositions of things are R6, and then you have even more articulated composition of this object in S4. Okay. So the trading, um, what, 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 what it means with trading states? Here, here uh, th there is a nice vignette where you can uh, like have a, uh, an interesting uh, things like uh, information. So in S3, the challenge is to return a value and modify the object. Instead, in R6, it's like a bit simpler. This can be done. It violates set guidelines. An example is um, um, if, if I go to my to my R, there, there is a um, uh, a folder. You you have that in the in the repo. Okay, this, this is the, the code uh, in the book, okay? And uh, they, they make a, an example with making a stack, okay? They do a function and then another function. So they made a stack and then a push and a poop, okay? These methods, here. I'm not I'm not going I'm not saying that these are a set of functions okay in, in this case you have three functions that release some items that you can um, uh, use with the function and you have some result okay uh, they uh, then um, you mentioned this this library with this zilot okay this one here is if if we have a quick look it's a it's a package uh which oops what it does uh, i need a loading is uh, does multiple unpacking and the structure assignment in R. So <laughs> you say, what, what does it mean? Okay. If you go and see this vignette, you might uh, find some light. 
okay and uh, it's a, an unpacking assignment so for example okay you we mentioned the fact that s3 objects are lists okay so this package uh, provide a pipe a, uh, a type of pipe which destructs destruct destroy okay the uh, object that you provide so you provide a list to release it object that's nice no? it's, it's interesting so it might be it, it it can turn to be useful can tend to be useful uh when you do programming things if you want if you need this this behavior this output okay so going back to to this uh, let's see um, details okay so If we want to get a stack of objects, no? Okay, so, and we, we can make functions, we do a new stack, then we set a function and another function. This assign this to, to some value values, we use the function and this releases a, 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 an, out, a, an output, okay? So the output is 20 and if you want to let a look at the class of these things is a stack because we have assigned it to be a stack. Now, if we do the same things, okay, with the zillot package, so we again, um, sorry, not, not 20, 10, we again obtain 10 using the function in a very so easily way. Okay, but different. And then in R6, what we do instead is it's a, a, it's a different uh, structure. Okay. And as you can see inside, in, this is an R6 class. Inside, there is a function. There is a function. Okay. So if this is an S3, this is a composition of pieces that goes inside one object, okay? And you have the same output, just different, um, different thing. And then you can, uh, let, let's go back, uh, where is it, here. So finally, the, the mentioned the difference between uh, chaining things, and you can use in S3 the pipe, or in R6 the, the dollar sign, or in Zillow, for example, the other the other uh, pipe. So this is the basically the chapter. Okay. Oops. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I shouldn't uh, do that. Because um, so basically here you can uh, like think about what are the difference between S3 objects and R6. And then S4 is an increasing complexity of those things. That's all for me. <laughs> if you have any questions, experience, or things that might be helpful. <laughs> well, first, Federica, thanks so much for taking on this chapter. It, uh, it, you know, looking at the outline, I thought, oh yeah, this will be an easy chapter. Then, then I looked into it and. It wasn't, it wasn't so easy. <laughs> exactly. 
So you may uh, want to, if if you go back to the to to the um, to the chapter, there may be things that um, like to think about. For example, the matrix that I haven't uh, talked much. But the matrix package is this uh, is to show you the complexity uh, of how, uh, for example, an S3 uh, class works. Basically, this is um, a series of uh, objects inside that relates to each other, but inside themselves they are complicated so they are articulated there are more things more functions more connection more things it's not just a simple thing so you have uh, more uh, that's that's why it's bioconductor is like uh, relating with genomics so you have data sets which are immense in uh, both in number of observations and in number of predictors. Instead, in CRAN, you might find data sets which are like uh, quite easy to use for even for, for students, for first time learners, and everything. So it's, it's like a, a working through increasing complexity. So I, I have a question for people that kind of were paying attention to this as well, reading the chapters. Were, were there any exercises that um, maybe provided nice cases where um, we could take a same problem and try to implement it with the different different classes? I Looking kind of quickly, I remember Trevin, when he was presenting R6, had mentioned that um, in a couple of the exercises, Had Hadley had suggested that readers try to implement something in both an S3 and an R6. Um, I don't recall, however, if there are any calls, any exercises of that sort that kind of asked us to also think about how to do this in, 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 in S4. I, I think, at least for me, the reason I'm asking this question is per personally, I guess it's these chapters were helpful in giving me kind of an overview of what exists and a little bit of details of what these things are, but it's hard for me to really truly understand something until I can play with it. And I, I'm just kind of looking, I'm looking for someone's suggestion about, you know, like a some some problem to try to solve with these three different three different OOP systems, right? Ideally, one where perhaps it the problem helps helps uh, someone understand kind of some of the advantages and disadvantages of each OOP system. I guess I'll stop with that. I, basically, did anyone see any any? I guess the, the short version is: Did anyone see any, any examples in reading these chapters or exercises where where there might be a good opportunity to kind of try out the same problem in two different OOP systems. Um, I'm not sure about, besides maybe the ones in the previous chapters, um, examples in this book. Um, but I guess I was thinking like what what would be like the next step or, or or like if you wanted to keep diving into object oriented programming like where would you go from here like would i'm not sure if there's more that's like specific to our programming or if at this point we would have to like go outside of our specific language and like branch out and read other object oriented books um 
that might be the case. I, I saw that design patterns is a is a popular uh, book pertaining to object oriented programming. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that would be like the next step or not. Yeah, that's a great question too, Trevin. <clears throat> And and this is only like a, a small portion of, I, I mean, there are a few chapters in the book, but it's, it's still uh, somewhat of a small portion of Advanced R. Um, and I, I think I read somewhere where you really need like six to 12 months to like learn and get object-oriented programming. So the like, few weeks that we spent on on this subject uh like might not be sufficient enough to like really dive into it so trevin to your to your point about kind of um next steps i mean um is anyone aware of any additional kind of documents that outside of this book that might go into more depth on um S3, S4, R6. Federica pointed to a few, few um, nice examples in mastering shiny and engineering. Um, I guess it was a production grade um, Colin phase book. Uh, uh, on, or let's call it the Gollum, the Gollum book for short. Um, um, and I think Hadley in the book mentioned that the S4 documentation is pretty scattered, and where you find it, it's not. It's misleading or not great and instead to look at bioconductors. So I, I'm kind of left scratching my head as to where do I look next if I want to learn to learn more. I, I guess there's kind of like the twofold approach. There's, as you kind of suggested, Trevin, is like where, are, where do resources exist for OOP kind of outside of R to kind of get the general concepts down? And then there's, I guess, the R specific OOP stuff. And I, I'm, I feel like I have better leads on the general OOP than I do on the R OOP. Okay, <laughs> uh, we, we need to a bit of meditation, <laughs> like practice meditation and just thinking about that we are already using them <laughs> somehow. So uh, let, let, let's try with uh, making setting a method for uh, our own function. And then let's start from that. Fair point. Okay, guys, thank you very much. It's uh, we, we reached the top of the hour, so we did good. Okay, apologies for the delay in starting this session. And uh, next, what's what's going to happen next week is that uh, no remember. Okay. So it's, uh, where am I? Uh, so it's Trevin next week, is that right? Big, the big picture? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Okay, so we all set. Thank you very much. And uh, see you next week. Thank you. See you then, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.